Cool. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Ehrman, and uh, I would like to welcome you to my talk um, about uh, JEP 3.0. Uh, before we start, a couple of uh, words about myself. Uh, I've been using Groovy for nine years now, and um, I'm very happy to, to be the lead of JEP, uh, which I'll be talking about today. Uh, I consider myself as an open source contributor. Um, I've contributed over the years to uh, multiple uh, projects in the uh, Groovy ecosystem, and I enjoy it quite a lot. Um, there is nothing nicer than crafting a PR and getting it accepted. Um, you can probably tell by my involvement into a project that is mainly used for testing that I also like testing and writing tests and executing them and seeing them go green. Uh, by day, I work at Adaptivist, where I um, develop script runner uh, for server, for Atlas and server products. Um, I gave a talk about, about that uh, yesterday. It's basically a product that allows you to run um, Groovy scripts in, inside of Atlassian app applications. And on Twitter, you can find me as Marcinetman. Okay, uh, anyone has played with JEP 3.0 already? Oh, you have? Interesting, because it's not been released yet, so um, uh, that's interesting how you've done it. Uh, but, um, yeah, um, I have to admit I submitted this talk um, probably, I don't remember when the uh, call for papers has been closed, but probably somewhere around January uh, without even starting work on JAP 3.0. Um, I had a rough idea about what I want to include in it. So I decided, like, yeah, let's submit this talk and let's do a bit of uh, conference-driven development. And I think um, it's um, it would be, you know, unwise not to take the opportunity and not to do a, a live release from from stage. So um, let's do that, um, you know, because what can go wrong? Yeah, it's like uh, okay. So let's jump into IntelliJ. Hopefully, you can. You can see something. Yes, that will be good. So um, let's do the release now. Um. Yeah, it's probably going to take some time um, for to get everything built and pushed. There's a number of um, of modules in the project, um, and. Um, it's fully automated, so it's going to be put into Maven Central, closed and promoted. It. Uh, it's going to take some time for it to sync to Maven Central, but um, after the talk, I'm going to send out an email to the uh, mailing list, and I'm going to tweet about it uh, to make people aware of it. Um, yeah, we probably don't have internet by the look of things. Uh, like I said, right? what can go wrong? Actually, this seems to be working. But this doesn't look like it is. Oh. It worked. Maybe it's very, very slow. Anyway, I think um, I'll just let it let it run, and we're going to jump back into the uh, into the presentation and come back and see when it when it finishes. Okay, cool. So um, basically, the the biggest feature that has been added in in, in JEP 3.0 um, are dynamic navigators. Uh, so by default, when you um, when you create a navigator using the dollar method in in JEP and you pass in a selector, that selector is evaluated at the creation time, and then the reference to the matching web elements is stored, and that reference never changes, um, even when the DOM changes. So for example, the element that uh, you selected has been removed from the DOM. And then you try to call methods on that navigator, and you are getting uh, stale element reference exceptions. Um, the fact that the 
DOM is, is modified happens quite a lot in single page apps. Um, so um, as a way to work around this issue, um, I came up with this idea of dynamic navigators, uh, which basically means that if you pass uh, an, an parameter, um, map parameter dynamic is true, um, then the created navigator will be dynamic. And what it means is that every single time you call a method uh, on that navigator that needs access to the web elements that have matched, the selector will be re-evaluated. So um, if you store the reference to the navigator and if the DOM um, structure changes, if you call methods uh, on that navigator, you, will, you, you should not be getting stale element exceptions then because it will select uh, against the latest uh, state of the DOM um, and you're going to get the current elements that exist in the DOM and not the, the ones that were, were there before. Um, Quite often when you're using JEP, you, uh, you don't really have to use dynamic navigators because if you have access to the definition of the navigator, for example, uh, when you're using pages and you use uh, the content DSL, uh, you can basically go back to the content DSL and get a new instance of that navigator for that, for that given entry in the content DSL, and then you can refresh it yourself. But there are situations where you don't have the access to the definition of the navigator, you only have access to the instance of it. And, um, and the situation, the most common one, is basically when you are within a module. So um, modules have uh, base navigators, so basically something that um, all of the references to methods and, and selectors within a, a JEP module, um, something that uh, the, these things are uh, resolved against. Um, and in that case, you cannot recreate that base, ele base, uh, base navigator. It's already there. So if the root of your module gets replaced by the single page app framework, JavaScript framework you're using, then there's no other way to work around the fact that um, this element might be um, removed from the DOM other than using dynamic navigators. So. Um, as I said, uh, you can create a dynamic navigator by passing the dynamic true um, map parameter to all of the methods in JEP that return navigators. So not only the dollar method, but in, this, uh, in the second example on the slide, you can also see uh, the children method that also returns navigator. Uh, and you can also make that navigator return from, from that method dynamic. So there are various other methods like has, parents, closest, Next, all of these uh, methods can give you now a uh, dynamic navigator if you pass dynamic true to them. Uh, cool, let's, uh, let's go back to the IDE. Hopefully the um, release process has finished by now and uh, let's look at some more example of dynamic navigators. It's still working, but I think it's almost done. So the repository has been, everything has been uploaded now, and the repository has been closed. And that is kind of expected. I have to change the build. It happens to me pretty much all the time. Um, basically what happens when you're publishing to Maven Central is you first have to close the, um, release repository, and then you have to promote it so that it's being then synced into Maven Central. Uh, sometimes after you close it, the repository, when you, when you query, uh, it still says that it not, has not been closed, and then when you try to promote it, the, the task fails. But uh, we, will just, we will just try to promote it again, and that should hopefully, that should hopefully work. Yay, that's a success. So hopefully by the, by the time the talk ends, we're going to go to Maven Central and see the latest version uh, in there. Because as I said, it takes a bit of time for it to sync. Um, so um, that's not the one I wanted. Module-based spec. 
Okay. So uh, presentation mode. Let's enter the presentation mode so that it's easier for you to find. Okay. So um, I don't have any specific examples prepared for this um, for this talk, but I'm just going to use the examples that um, are there already in the book of Jeb in the manual. So um, uh, the way things work uh, in, in, in Jeb Build is basically um, I'm writing some tests and then I'm using ASCII doc tags to extract text from these tests, uh, the snippets into the manual. So all of the snippets that you see in Jeb manual are tested. So um, you'll see you know, quite a lot of ASCII doctor tags for extract, extracting, um, extracting information from these tests that I'm showing you, but just please ignore them. I'm just going to use these tests, these uh, examples that I already have um, to showcase you the, the latest um, features in, in JEP. So going back to the dynamic navigators, uh, what we have over here is um, a simple Vue.js uh, application uh, that renders uh, a list uh, for various berries, strawberry, raspberry, blueberry, and cranberry. Um, it also, uh, that list also provides buttons uh, to move, to reorder the list, move the items in the list up and down. Uh, and basically we have um, a handler for clicking on the buttons that allow you to reorder uh, the lists in the item. Uh, and uh, the handler basically uh, swaps uh, the uh, item at index plus one with the item at index. Um, so just reorders things in the list. And because I'm using Vue.js over here, um, I'm just modifying the model um, in the handler for the clicks, and then Vue re-renders um, the, list, the list for me automatically. Um, I'm cheating a bit over here because Vue is actually quite smart, and it will not take out the list item that I've changed via the model and re-render it again. It will, it will just go into the DOM and figure out that I've it's the same object that has been at index two and I'm moving it to index one. So instead of putting it out completely of the DOM and re-rendering it again, again, it just reorders items in the DOM and keeps them. So I'm kind of cheating here so that um, working around it, telling it that basically I'm defeating the mechanism of Vue.js detecting that I've just moved the items and I'm forcing it to actually re-render the, um, the items in the list every single time. This is basically to be able to showcase you that the, how to deal with the fact when, when your framework removes the root of your, of your module uh, from the DOM. Um, yeah, so uh, then, we have, then we have a page over here that modules the list. And um, in that page, we have a definition for an item which takes a text and it returns um, a list item, an instance of list item module. Um, and over here we have a method uh, that um, allows us to move uh, the item in a list a number of times. It just basically clicks on one of the buttons in that list that I showed you before. Um, the uh, important bit to notice is that basically this module has this navigator as the um, as the base navigator, yeah. So the it, it the base navigators of list item are li elements, and these are the elements that will be removed from the list and put back again when we start modifying the model when we start modifying the items in the list. Yeah. So if we look at this this na uh, this definition over here. Uh, what you see is uh, that um, this navigator is not dynamic. Um, so if we use this, uh, this page, uh, the page with list, which for which the items in the list are not dynamic, uh, we're going to get a stale element exception after we try moving things up. Yeah, because uh, we're going to be clicking on the up button, and the up button is resolved with um, uh, is created with regards to based on the base navigator, which is not in the uh, in the DOM anymore, and we're getting a stale element exception. But if we change the definition uh, for the base element of the 
items in the list to be dynamic, then um, that, uh, that exception will not happen anymore, and um, we will basically have them reordered. So original only the list is strawberry, raspberry, blueberry, and cranberry. We move blueberry by two, and we end up with blueberry, strawberry, raspberry, and cranberry. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty much it when it comes to dynamic navigators. Um, I know that there, the assertions in then blocks shouldn't be there, like they are unnecessary, but just bear in mind that I'm using this code to extract snippets out uh, and put them in the, in, the, in the manual. So in there, I actually want people to, th to I want to be explicit that I'm asserting over here. So. It's, it's by design like this. Um, okay. So um, let's go back to the presentation. So dynamic navigators are not a silver bullet, uh, especially for uh, stale element reference exceptions. They are not a complete a complete fix for that. Why is that? Because you have to understand that performing actions on elements in WebDriver is not atomic. So there are always two parts of it. First part is finding the element. So you need to send one WebDriver uh, protocol call from the JVM to the browser to tell it to find the elements. It, it gives you back the elements. And then only then you can say, oh, now on these elements, can you perform the click action, which is a second um, web driver uh, protocol call. And if between these two calls, the element that you're dealing with gets removed from the, um, from the DOM, you're still going to get uh, a stale element exception. So don't go and make all of your uh, navigators um, dynamic now, um, because it, it, it's not what you should really do. You should only, only make them dynamic if there is a possibility in your test that they will be replaced, removed uh, from the DOM. And obviously, uh, dynamic navigators come at a cost. So um, because the, uh, the, the, the elements that are matching the selector for a dynamic navigator are being refreshed before every single uh, method that you call on a navigator that needs access to these elements, um, it means that basically there's quite a lot of web driver commands being sent, web driver protocol uh, calls being sent from the JVM to the to the browser. Which um, you know, the more you use it, the, the 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 slower things will will get. So use it with caution and where it actually needs to to be used. Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's move on. Uh, so as originally uh, in in JEP when um, JEP reporting spec has been introduced and JEP reporting test has been introduced. Uh, they would take uh, a report, so a screenshot and um, a capture of the source of the page that you're on when the report is being taken. After um, every single um, test at the end of it, regardless of if it failed or not. Uh, but these reports are usually just, just useful for um, for for just you know ver um, debugging when something fails when your test fails you just want to look at them then you don't want to really lose the time taking them after every test if it completes and you don't really want to waste the, the you know the um, storage on your CI server with um, putting loads of reports that you will never really look at so some time ago um, a new configuration option has been um, introduced uh, called report on test failures only. Um, and in JEP 3.0, that has been the that option has been set to true by default. So when you are using JEP report spec or JEP report test, now uh, you will only get reports uh, if there is a test failure, and you will not get reports at the end of uh, the, um, the spec. Um, of course, the option uh, configuration option is still there. So if you feel like getting reports at the end of every test, you can still enable it. Um, because of uh, the implementation of dynamic navigators, um, uh, there has there have been um, uh, a significant changes. A significant cha significant changes have been necessary uh, to the internal implementation of navigator. 
So there have been some breaking changes. That's one of the reasons why this release is a major release and not a minor, re minor re release because there are just breaking changes. And um, if you have um, uh, created your own implementation of Navigator, uh, which is, um, to admit, quite uh, um, expert use case, so to speak, uh, so most people wouldn't have, but if you have, uh, you might see things break and you will need to re rework that. Um, yeah, so there have, been, there have been some breaking changes and, and uh, that's, why, um, that's why this is a major release and, and not a minor one. Um, to keep up with other projects, I have updated um, all of the dependencies of JEP to uh, to the latest version. Uh, so Jeb is now built with uh, Groovy 2.5.6, Spock 1.3. Uh, we're using Gradle 5.4.1 to build it. Uh, this is important not only for the build itself, but uh, there are Jeb comes with two um, Gradle plugins for performing browser tests in the cloud. So integrations with uh, Source Labs and Browser Stack. Um, so they they are also built with, with this version of, of Gradle. Um, it's more of an um, anecdote and, and interesting point than really something useful or important to the users, but um, I was really looking forward to up upgrading to Groovy 2.5 uh, line uh, because some time ago, so, so, so JEP is using quite, significant, uh, quite, um, quite a lot. It is using uh, delegation, um, by the means of at delegates uh, annotation, um, which create which is an IST transformation that basically delegates all of the methods on the annotated uh, field to the class where it's used. Um, so uh, there is this one really useful method in JEP uh, that is the dollar method, and uh, previous versions of Groovy would not delegate. Uh, to that method because they, they deemed it, uh, Groovy still deems it an internal method if it has a dollar at the, at the beginning. So um, um, I had to do quite a lot of manual delegation for all of the dollar methods and um, I worked some time ago to, uh, to change the delegate annotation to, to have a switch where you can say like I also want the, what you deem to be internal methods uh, to also be delegated and I've done that and that allowed me to remove quite a lot of code in, in JEP. Um, again, something uh, not really um, concerning the end users of JEP, but more for people who would contribute. Um, so Miha is here and that was kind of initiated, this change was initiated by, by him. Uh, so Jeb is uh, performing cross-browser testing uh, using Sauce Labs and uh, Browser Stack. And uh, when you're a contributor, uh, it is kind of painful if you want to run them because you need to have an account in one of these services or both of these services if you want to, if you want to run these cross-browser tests. So um, there is an alternative, at least for Chrome and Firefox on Linux. You don't have to use, uh, you don't have to use these uh, cloud services, what you can do instead is just use test containers and run a Linux container that has the browser installed within it. And that's what I've, um, that's what I've moved the, some of the cross-browser tests to so that um, as a contributor, if you need to work on, on these tests, it's, um, it's just easier for you and you don't have to um, do much setup and you don't have to get credentials for these, um, for these, um, uh, cloud services for, for browser testing. Um, that's uh, pretty much it when it comes to uh, changes in 3.0, uh, but I would like to still take some time and, and talk you through uh, the mo more significant changes in the last year. Um, so some, some of the, I'll talk about some of the changes in, uh, that have been introduced in uh, the 2.x line of, of JEP. Um, so uh, let's start with the focused method, uh, which has been which has been added uh, recently, and it allows you to obtain a navigator of the currently focused um, element. 
Let's have a look at the example of that. By the way, do you know a better way of being able to see your notes uh, without having to switch from mirroring to, to displays? I just don't know how to do it, so it is super annoying, but bear with me, please. I just don't know a better way. Yeah, true, true. That, that is always an option. Maybe I should consider it. So uh, what we have over here is another test uh, from the manual. Uh, we have a bit of HTML, uh, which, um, s which contains an, an a text input called description. And then we uh, click on that, um, on that element. Um, and then we can use the focused method to obtain, to obtain the currently focused element. And we can check that the name of it is description. And also, another thing that has been introduced uh, before, uh, so there is a is focused is focused method on navigator, um, so we can also check that a given navigator um, holds a focused uh, a focused element currently focused element. Yeah, I think I will just not bother. Um. Interesting. On my monitor, then I now I have without even switching, I still have the, the notes. Cool, I didn't know that. There you go, you learned something. Uh, so, um, better support for strong typing. So, for some time ago, um, I've been writing my JAP tests in a strongly typed way. So, this means um, tracking the type of the current of the JAP page you are currently on. Uh, which um, then allows IntelliJ to uh, to understand the types and it provides you with auto-completion. Um, and um, I was pushing it even further recently with uh, uh, being able for in, uh, telling IntelliJ what is the context, what is the delegate of some of the methods in JEP that take um, that take closures. Uh, namely, uh, with window, uh, with frame, and interact. All of these methods in JEP they take closures, and now um, I've the uh, delegates to annotation has been added to to them to their signatures, which means IntelliJ knows what is the delegate inside of these closures, and it will provide you with uh, without the completion. A new at method uh, has been also added. Uh, which, uh, apart from the type of the page that you are checking, if you're at, also takes um, a closure. And uh, that closure is also using uh, delegates too. So um, within that closure, IntelliJ understands that uh, you are the, pr the um, properties and, and method calls that you are um, using should be resolved against the, the page in question, page type in question. So again, you get out of completion. And another thing is uh, within that closure, uh, implicit assertions are uh, enabled, which means that it ba basically behaves as if uh, it was part of the then or expect block in Spock. So you get uh, better uh, re reporting when, when things fail. So let's uh, let's have a look at uh, the uh, example. Over here. So um, we have uh, some HTML here. Um, it's probably not that important to dig too deeply into it. It's just a, um, a home page and a login page. I think from the test itself, you'll be able to figure out what happens. So. Um, over here, you can see that I'm tracking the, the type of the page that I'm currently on. So um, IntelliJ actually understands um, which methods I'm calling. So I get full navigation and ID and auto-completion and um, yeah, all the niceties that you can think of. Um, and over here, you can see the new add method uh, in question. Uh, so um, as I said, within this closure, uh, IntelliJ understands that we are 
resolving the method calls against uh, login page a login page instance. So again, if I drill down into this, it understands that I'm calling the login method on the login page over here. And uh, this, uh, this call is also asserted. So if login, uh, for some reason, returned null or false, um, uh, it would, um, uh, an assertion error would, would occur. So this basically allows you to, to write, um, to, to write uh, your, your JEP code in a concise way, yet uh, you get uh, auto-completion uh, within this block, which I, th I find is, is really important if you, if you have multiple people working on the same code base and when things get too dynamic, it's really hard to follow things. And um, when you get navigation and auto-completion, it, it's just easier to work with. Mm. Look at this. Okay. No? No. All right. I think I have to do this. Sorry about that. Was it like that before? Or were you? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't know that. <laughs> I thought you saw the previous, uh, previous slide, so you didn't, see, you didn't see the slide when I, was, when I switched over last time around. Anyway. Um, cool. Uh, so the next thing is a method for waiting while the page is being reloaded. So actually, it should be the other way around, reloading the page while waiting. Um, the method that has been added is called uh, ref refresh wait for. And basically what happens is it's like a regular wait for method in, in JEP, which waits for the condition that you pass as a closure to, to pass. Uh, but before each execution of the of the condition, uh, the page is being reloaded. So um, this is useful when you have when you're testing an application that doesn't um, doesn't up, uh, update, uh, isn't dynamic. It doesn't update the page that is that has been rendered, and there is some kind of a background action happening, and you want for the background action to to finish, and you have to basically um, do a bit of busy polling and 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 asking if uh, um, checking if if the the background action has, has completed. So, um, so let's have a look at a, at the test here. So um, in this example, we have um, a page uh, that basically prints uh, the current, current time um, within a span. Uh, and we have a test um, which starts by taking the current timestamp. Um, it goes to the page with timestamp. There's nothing interesting, nothing interesting uh, to see here. Just a regular page. There's a timestamp um, uh, content definition in that page, which basically takes whatever is the text of the page, which in this case will be a date uh, offset date time string and it parses it and it gives it gives it back to us um, as um, as an offset daytime so then we can we can do uh, we can do a condition like this uh, so we're dealing with timestamps and not with with uh, with DOM elements and, and text and stuff like that just slightly more uh, slightly more type safe and expressive way so uh, we're basically over here we're waiting for um, 300 milliseconds to pass while reloading and using the timestamp of the page to tell us that 300 milliseconds have passed. And then we are verifying that um, actually the timestamp in the page uh, after we have been reloading for 300 milliseconds is higher, is later than the start timestamp of the test uh, plus 300 milliseconds. Um, yeah, as I said, this this method is useful when you are um, when you are dealing with pages that don't refresh, but they show you a result of uh, an action that runs in the background, and you just want to wait for the background action to finish. Hmm, interesting. Oh, okay. 
Okay, um, another addition uh, to JEP 2.x was uh, native support for web storage. So if your application is using session storage or uh, local storage, you can now um, access it uh, via uh, two methods, uh, two properties on the browser. Uh, one of them is called local storage and the other one is called session, session storage and they are groovy in a sense that you can treat them as maps even though they are not maps so you can you can use the map um, notation on them to uh, set and retrieve values from uh, web storage. Okay, um, just a quick example here. Uh, not really all that useful, but um, this just shows you that you can you can set set values in in local storage as if it was as uh, as if it was a map. Um, it's a it's a property of of browser both local storage and there's also uh, session storage which is also um, a property on the browser. Cool. Uh, finally, the last thing I wanted to talk about are some small improvements to reporting in JEP. So uh, it's up until uh, recently it wasn't possible to report on sources of uh, frames if the page that you were testing uh, had frames in, in it. So basically, you would not you would not have access to the HTML of these frames. Uh, and also, if you are using multiple windows in your tests. Um, only the window that was focused at the time of the report would have a report taken for uh, and um, ability uh, to actually capture reports for all of the open windows has been added. Uh, both of these two things have been implemented as new uh, reporters uh, and uh, in the manual it's, um, it's all uh, described how to, how to use them. So basically, if you want to enable taking reports of sources of frames and taking reports of multiple windows, uh, you just have to change your JEP config or Groovy configuration a bit, and um, then you're done. Cool, so that's pretty much it with uh, regards to the updates. Uh, I want to also take some time to talk about project health. Uh, because, um, I don't know if you follow uh, the Groovy podcast closely, uh, but some time ago Ken and Baruch have decided that JEP is not maintained anymore and um, that there is no activity on it, which I want to uh, explain that is not the case. Uh, what you have here is the comment uh, graph for JEP repo over time. Um, I consider that to be uh, pretty healthy. There was a bit of a uh, no activity in the late 2018, but then um, I managed to catch up a bit and, and there was another spike of activity at the end of 2018 and, and just now for the JEP 3.0 for, for the conference room development. So um, I think um, I think that's, um, that's positive. Um, these, this is a graph of downloads of JEP core from Maven Central. I wouldn't pr really put too much of um, attention to the numbers because nowadays when you have um, cloud CIs, people tend not to cache their dependencies and download them for every single build. So uh, these numbers are probably elevated. But what this shows is that um, yeah, Jeb is still being used and um, the uh, the usage seems to be seems to be going up, seems to be on the rise and not uh, not otherwise. Finally, uh, graphs of uh, graphs from Google Analytics a visit to uh, jebbish.org. Uh, you can see if the top graph is the last year um, of visits. You can see that monthly there are between 5,000 and 10,000 uh, visits to the site. Um, people are probably coming for, for the manual. Um, I have no idea what the bump in December is. Cannot explain it. But 
again, it's, it's, it's relatively stable and it's, I would say it's a, it's a nice number uh, to have um, of people visiting the project page. Uh, the one below is historical number of users. Uh, you could see that initially the, the number was growing. Now it has kind of stagnated, but still isn't, isn't, doesn't seem to be going down. So uh, people um, hopefully find uh, JEP useful. Uh, with regards to the future, um, Jeff has been around for almost nine years now. The first comet was in June or July 2010, so uh, close to the ninth anniversary. So it's quite a mature product, I would say. Uh, there aren't that many big changes coming. Um, I, whenever I, I use it myself and find that there can be improvements done, then I create issues for that and do it. Uh, the only bigger outstanding issue in the backlog at the moment is support for JUnit 5. Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't really looked into what, would that, uh, what that would entail, so um, I don't know how much work that would be and what we can do in that space, but that's something I will, I will probably uh, look into, uh, hopefully before the next release. Um, yeah, and I will be just you know, looking to uh, keep up with groovy, re groovy releases, with, with web driver releases, with Spock releases, to keep everything up to date and working with the, with the latest and greatest, with the latest and greatest versions. Um, finally, um, I would like to give a big shout out to all the 58 contributors that have contributed to JEP over time. It's really, really nice to, uh, um, to, to work on a project that had so many contributors over the years. Uh, this list is also available in the, in the manual, um, and it's honestly not too hard to get your name onto that list. Um, I find JEP a good entry-level project to contribute to because the, uh, because the code base is relatively small and it's, it's kind of... Um, it, has, it doesn't have too broad of... Um, uh, it's basically not a, a broad, broad project. It's it's doing one small thing and 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 that's it. So it's it's nice to it's relatively easy to dig into the source code and and start contributing. There's plenty of tests. So uh, if you break something, you'll know uh, relatively quickly. Um, and um, yeah. Are there any questions? I don't see. Oh, there is. There is a question from Jacob. How much, uh, how much effort do you think it has to put into uh, breaking changes uh, to, to upgrade to JEP 3.0? Uh, so you have implemented your own. Um, you have your own implementation of Navigator. Uh, no, just from a uh, from a test point of view. Uh, then that would I would say there is zero effort. It, okay. It's the breaking changes are not to the API of Navigator, the breaking changes are to the internals of it and the current implementation. So you will only be affected if you implemented a custom custom Navigator, uh, which is possible and some people some people do it, but I would say that most, most users wouldn't. So um, unless you're doing something uh, advanced, uh, probably shouldn't be a big effort to update to, uh, to JEP3. Anybody else? Yep. wire VCR basically to the um, to, to the web driver uh, what you uh, eat the recordings of uh, right. yeah so um, I was looking into that when I when I switched to using test containers uh, the thing is that at the moment you cannot have a recording per test you have to have a recording for all of your tests spanning all of your tests and I don't really find it that useful so um, when uh, test containers gives you the ability to just record uh, the video of a single test, which I will be able to then throw out if there is no failure. Um, I, I will not introduce it into this because I, I just don't think that it's that useful. Um, I find these reporting things to be useful when you have a test failure to actually look at it, otherwise you will not really look at it. But that's, you know, that's from Jeb internal point of view. Uh, for people who are actually using JEP for testing applications and they want to have reports, it's a different situation. But so that, that's what I meant, like having uh, not only streams of reports, but even video reports, so that you can just look at the metrics that you're producing uh, people out there. 
Yeah, but that probably wouldn't be done using the reporting API because the reporting API is, you say, you tell it, take a snapshot now. And with, with recordings, you basically have to spun the whole test. So the life cycle there, <coughs> sorry, is a bit different. So uh, we would need to um, maybe think about um, changes there. It's, I don't see it fitting with the current implementation of, of reporting. It's, it's, a different, it's a different life cycle of how you take these, uh, these videos than just taking a report at a point in time. Yeah, if if ideally if test containers give you a, an ability to do that, I don't think it's possible at the moment. But no, I don't think web dri web driver would be aware of of, of recording. I, I think you would need to you would need to use uh, test containers for that. Cool. Thank you very much for attending and enjoy the rest of the conference.